major New York retailers drawing big tourist crowd to see their holiday windows at this time of the year. So what goes into making that special holiday window? I talked to Saks to find out. So we start the window process actually in December while the previous year's windows are in. We walk by the, you know, walk by the windows, talk to people on the street to see what they like and what they're responding to. So we do more of that next year in a different way. And then things that maybe we thought worked as well and aren't working as well, we can take those out for next year. So initially we start that early and then really in January, February, we'll start our concept and our sketching for next year, working through to storyboards in, in middle spring. And then through the summer, we're actually prototyping and start building some components of the windows. Ultimately by fall, we've built all six windows off-site completely and then we break them down move them into the windows and rebuild them here you know it's exciting for us this year for a few reasons one is we've uh, introduced a level of interactivity that we haven't had in the past so we have a kaleidoscope window that has sort of these traditional kaleidoscopes that you might recognize or know from your childhood but now we've put this digital element in where we have a camera in the window that actually turns viewers as they're walking by into digital snowflakes in the window and then one of the other exciting ones that we've done this year is we found a couple of artists um, from Australia on YouTube and we actually used them to do a video for us, a stop motion chalk video that's in our last window, uh, which was a, a labor of love by all means. We, you know, working with someone that's literally on the other side of the world uh, was a blast and, and, and you know, we're really pleased with how it turned out. And what's the most challenging and the most difficult like window to get it done? Uh, I'd have to say probably the hardest one that we did, there are two, I think the first window, the snow globe window, the shelves that are in there, so, you know, they turn in on themselves within about a 30 second of an inch of each other. So they're very, very close turning and to keep them turning and balanced was a, a an engineering miracle, honestly. Most snow globes get turned over maybe a hundred times in their whole lifetime, if you will. These snow globes are turning thousands of times. For six weeks, 24 hours a day, these snow globes are turning. So we actually hooked one up to a motor in the shop and had it turn constantly for two weeks to see what happened. And then the window where we make it snow was certainly a challenge. How do we make it snow when it's you know 55 degrees outside and it's not cold in the windows, obviously, and we can't have the, the moisture that's required for snow in the window. So that was certainly no small feat. There's a little secret, it's, it's feathers. And um, we went through several iterations of what we could do to make it look like snow and what looked the most like snow. And after tests and trials over the summer, we tried probably four or five different components that felt like snow. We landed on feathers. So literally when we opened the window, we took a down pillow apart, dumped the feathers in with air hoses, and now we have snow in the windows. You know, behind the scenes, because of all these motors, there's wires and cables and computers that are running everything. And, and it's all sort of hidden away, and that's how it all works. But we don't really want the people outside to even know or be concerned with how it works. It's just part of what we do with these miles and miles of wires and tape and paint and, and glue and all of that that's back there. That's, that's sort of the fun that we have so that you don't see that when you go outside.